going on welcome to conversations with heathen tracy designing your life good in the morning DMV. good morning baby? what a beautiful morning here in the dmv come on in sit down with us grab your coffee grab your tea we're gonna be here for about an hour or so just chopping it up talking to you about demystifying your move to the dmv so welcome happy saturday welcome to conversations with heathen tracy so we meet here Every Saturday morning, 11 a.m. EST to demystify your move to the DMV. So, hey, we are so glad you are with us. So, ask us anything. Y'all can ask us anything. It's fine. If you have a question, type in the comments below. You put a Q in front of it mm-hmm, so we can mm-hmm. see it. And if you want to type in all caps, we know you're not yelling. <laughs> and if you're thinking about the DMV, we want to help. So, what you're going to learn today? Yeah, we're going to talk. We're going to talk about Upper Georgia. Avenue. Two zero zero one two. <laughs> We're gonna talk about what happened in the DMV this week. And designing your life today. We're talking about getting your money right. Get your, get your coins up, get the bag in order. So, so hey, if this is your first time <laughs> Ooh, spending time with us on this beautiful Saturday. Here we go. My name <laughs> is Heath. And I'm Tracy. Tracy and our parents podcasters and we are joyfully married after 30 years yes 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 we have four children too so you know we know about uh a we lot of, do a lot have of things. four kids yes he. we can speak on a lot of things have we ever told y'all the ages of our kids that's, that's irrelevant to the conversation okay. pending okay okay <laughs> but if you want some positivity and an upbeat vibe in your saturday morning hey join us right here every saturday at 11 a.m est where tracy and i are here talking about the dmv And if you're new here, type new you, new you down in the comments so we can chop it up with you. We'd love to meet you and talk with you and uh, see what's going on and say hello. And if you need help relocating, take a second and subscribe. We get on here every Saturday morning and we talk about relocating to the DMV. Mm -hmm. We talk about different neighborhoods Mm -hmm. and what to expect when you move here because we just did it and we just thought it'd be nice to share. Just sharing because sharing is caring. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> so you're going to let people know uh, what the intro looks like again. Okay, so you got to say it, though. Hit that button. Welcome back. Welcome back to Conversations with Heath and Tracy, where we demystify your move to the DMV. Okay, so we got picks for you. We've got a lot of information about Upper Georgia Avenue. A.K.A. Uh, what, UGA. 
Oh, yeah, that's what they're calling it now, UGA, Upper Georgia Avenue. They're calling it UGA Main Street. So after we uh, do the show, if you want to know more about the area that we're talking about, mm-hmm. Upper Georgia Avenue mm-hmm. Main Street, you, pro- you probably want to put in Google UGA Main Street. Hey, and and that'll you, give you a lot of information. And if you see UGA, uh, University of Georgia, shout out to all my people in Atlanta, Metro Atlanta, okay. the state no. of Georgia. That's not, that's not what we're talking no. about, though. I say no to that. So we're not talking about the bulldogs today. No, we're not. <laughs> no, we're not. Just want to be clear. No, make sure we're not. There's we're no not, confusion. We're not, it's very confusing. <laughs> it's very confusing. We're talking about UGA, dog. No, we're talking about Upper Georgia Avenue. No, I'm saying that's right. That's I know, what I'm saying. I know. It's like who's on first. Uh, okay. <laughs> Woo! I think he had his coffee this morning. Look. Look, I'm just trying to bring the energy and positive vibes to the whoop, people. Whoop. Yeah, good morning. I hope everyone is doing well. I hope you are well this morning. I hope you had a great week. And yes. I hope you have some great plans for this weekend. Mm-hmm. And just just re- sit back, relax, get your little cup. Listen, just listen to what's going on in the DMV. Stop and smell the flowers. Okay, so let's get into it. Okay, wait. I was just trying to get you a little... Uh I was trying to book, play off of my little bouquet that I made back there. Oh, then. okay. So our stop yard and, is full of these things right here. The daf- these things the, right here. Daphne got another bucket over there. They're, uh, so I'm sitting here this morning. The variation of Daphne. I'm sitting here this morning. I'm trying to get the show together and everything. <laughs> and my husband walks in yep. to our bedroom mm-hmm. with a bucket. Mm-hmm. Full of flowers like this, and, I, and let me tell you, I just did one thing this morning. He had he gives me a bouquet bouquet every weekend, and I sit them on my desk, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. and I said, "Oh, babe, we need to move the wilted flowers." Right. This man comes in with a bucket full. I'm talking. This is only about a third of the what he pulled in. You know, just clip a few flowers. <laughs> you know, threw together a little arrangement. You know, that's. I'm, a, I'm skilled like it's that. It's his thing. It's his thing. I have so many, I, have I hope things. you enjoy the daffodils behind us. Hey. And we hope you wake up. Yes. Go find some daffodils. Get out there. It's spring. Yes. Go out there. See the birds hopping around. We have two doves hopping around our house. <laughs> you know, doves are really cool, though, because they, they're mates for life. Mm-hmm, they're mm-hmm. mates for life, so... I'm I'm trying to get used to them. I did have the lady come um, spray for deer repellent <laughs> this week, though. The deer still coming? No, the, stop saying that. I'm saying they they may not eat the flowers that you don't want them to eat. But no, they, she said it's gonna keep them out of my yard. Okay. So let me tell y'all something. One day I was downstairs in the kitchen making some making something with my older son, and mm-hmm. we were like, something something looking at us. <laughs> and we turn around and there's a deer standing in the window looking at us like, what are you doing in my house? What you doing, man? Because we've only been here a few months. He's like, what's popping? I was like, no. Hey, no. look. No. And he said he sits in his office and they walk right on by. Yeah, they always they always flowing around. So it's definitely spring. We've got the squirrels. The squirrels are still fat. We have this one greedy squirrel mm-hmm. that lives on my side of the house. When I say my side, where my office is. And mm-hmm. on his side of the house, we call him Ethan Hawk. <laughs> <laughs> don't, yeah. don't, don't, yeah. don't, don't, yeah. don't, 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 don't. He don't, jumps. Don't. He likes to jump from limb to limb. And he's like we, an I acrobat. Know, I know who he is when I see him because he's the only squirrel out there doing that. Y'all seen Tom Cruise in Mission Impossible, right? You know how so, he's like acrobat. He's always repelling down from some come building or something. And uh, so that's why I, I so know So it's been the really, heart. really pretty here. The cherry yeah. blossoms are popping mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and they have popped. Yes. And now they're going. Yeah. But it's all good. We still have some dogwoods or some mm-hmm. white cherry trees. I don't know what they are, but they're really Breath beautiful. Breath pears, I don't dog know, woods, I don't know, but we have cherry flowering blossoms, trees all over all the over city the right now, and it's mm-hmm. really, really pretty. It is, no doubt. No okay. Doubt. So and we have daffodils. Yeah, we have a lot. The person that lived here prior was into her yard, and we have so, I, I think we have hundreds of daffodils in our yard. Yeah. We literally, we have hundreds mm-hmm. of them. Hundreds. It's, it's cool. It's It's okay. On to the show. Okay. So let's talk about Upper Georgia <laughs> Avenue, uh-huh. Walter Reed. So this is really cool. These are pictures of the new development in the area. And remember, we said we were going to talk about this area because it's one of the boom towns, uh, the boom neighborhoods in D.C. Yeah, yeah. So you want to give uh, some context, right? And so in the last few weeks, we talked about some of the neighborhoods that are, like, booming and on right. on the cusp of really booming 
in, with respect to the DMV. And, and so we're this trying is, to hit those for so you. So this is one of them, right? And so we really want you guys to understand what's happening and the opportunity to be engaged in some of these neighborhoods. Right. So, so today we're talking about Upper Georgia Avenue, the Walter Reed area, right? So Walter Reed Hospital, some of you may have heard that term before. But neighborhoods like uh, Parkview and Petworth have really become fashionable over like the last decade in D.C. But if you just go a little bit further north of there, um, you know, they call it Upper Georgia Avenue, right? And it hasn't seen as much growth, but man, it is finally coming, right? So there's been a long anticipated scenario with the redevelopment of Walter Reed Hospital because it's, you know, it's an army medical center and uh, it had become dilapidated and that kind of thing. And so what they're doing is they, they broke ground last spring on a brand new 66 acre plot that uh, Washington, D.C. purchased from the federal government. So if you just think about that, I mean, Washington, D.C. is only like 25 square miles. So this is 66. I thought it was eight. Yeah, eight square miles, whatever it is. Right? But the point is, this is 66 acres in the middle of the city. Yeah. It's like crazy how, uh, what an opportunity <clears throat> this is, right? And so there are like three companies, three big development companies that are behind the uh, the development and all of that. Um, but uh, when it's finished, it's going to comprise a brand new Totally new community, right? There's going to be like 2,200 apartments and condominiums there. Yep. Uh, they're going to have ho- brand new houses up there, 200,000 square feet of retail space. They're going to have uh, a Whole Foods. Office, medical space, yeah, Whole, Whole Foods, Foods t- 240,000 uh, square feet of retail. Uh, I mean, it's just going to be a massive development, right? Yeah, and they're trying to have new embassies go to that area just to give you a map of the area we're talking about. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So when we're talking about Upper Georgia Avenue, Northwest Route 29 is Georgia Avenue, and it's basically the direct route almost through the middle of the city. You've got 16th Street and you've got Georgia Avenue. They run parallel. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about the area that's above Route 1. Once you get into like Columbia Heights, right past Howard University, H U, and then past Petworth mm-hmm. into Tacoma Park. Right. Okay. So those are some of the neighborhoods that we're talking about. Mm-hmm. It's going to go right alongside um, Rock Creek Park. So if you go to the upper Rock part Creek of the Georgia Park. Avenue, it's not as developed as the lower part of Georgia Avenue. Right. So when you're on the lower part of Georgia Avenue, it's like bustling. You see new buildings everywhere and new Mm -hmm. development. Mm -hmm. But as you get closer and closer to Maryland or Tacoma Park or Silver Spring, which we have talked about, Mm -hmm. you can see how, oh, that development hasn't gotten here yet. Mm -hmm. But it's coming. But we, we rode through what? Was it was that? last weekend. We last rode weekend there. we rode through yeah. there. We um mm-hmm. we just hadn't been up that way in a little while, mm-hmm. and we used we, to live up that way. Yep, we used to live back um, in the day, right in that neighborhood, mm-hmm. and it's a really nice neighborhood with some nice homes. Some grades that they have are. Um, their public schools are not in the A's, as we've been showing you with some of, of the other neighborhoods. Yeah, but they but it's beat. it's coming along, and mm-hmm. they're really, really concentrating on it. And I did want to show you, is it this picture? I want to show you this picture because mm-hmm. this picture is a picture of the group or the committee of people. This is their first committee meeting, mm-hmm. the Upper Georgia Avenue Association, I believe they're called. Yep. And they met, and they've gotten together to talk about how to – redo this neighborhood they handle the business and as you can see it's it's a mixed group yeah people and i'm really agendas. happy to see that because mm-hmm. what i looked at when we were looking at uh stuff for this uh, community mm-hmm. we noticed that they are trying to help the current businesses that are there right right they have a lot of grants happening a lot of grants going on and they're really trying to make sure that the current community stays put. Mm-hmm. And I really, really commend them for that. So if you're looking for an investment property, yep. if you're looking to move into an area that isn't quite there yet, mm-hmm. this mm-hmm. area I think is really good. If, if we wanted to invest right now mm-hmm. in the city, Mm-hmm. This is some place you could go right now and still feel like you're not going to lose your shirt. Yeah, because that's what you want, right? You want the uh, an area that has the ability to create some some s- some equity for you, there's right? There's some uh, upward. In, in conjunction with a feel of community and a thriving business community that they're looking to develop. So, I mean, a lot of pros to this area. Yeah. So, um, let's see. They've got some pretty good rankings. They're number two of 22 
most diverse zip codes. Yeah, that's right. In that's, DC, that's like right there. What you were describing with that picture, right, baby? It's like yeah, all kinds of yeah. people who are coming together. And so when you think about the concept of gentrification and redevelopment and those kinds of things, this is sort of a juxtaposition of that, right? Because it's not just like one group displacing another group. No, it's this not. Is, this is like the current group that's there. People working who with live the people here coming in. It's like, yeah, we getting ready to do this. Right. And we're gonna make it better for everybody. Yeah. yeah. And th- and that's what's really good. So this right here uh, where is it let's see if i can find it this right here is the tower <laughs> that sits in the area that i'm talking about and it's so weird because i've been at rooftop hotels and things like that there are not many tall buildings in dc yeah and i've been like what is that yeah you're looking across the, the you're little looking skyline across the and skyline what's going really on. nice because you got you know low beautiful buildings mm-hmm. throughout rooftop gardens and stuff you look out and you're like, what is that? Is that some kind of funky radio tower? It's exactly what it is. <laughs> but this is like their little landmark for the area. Right, right. So let's see what cost of living looks like. Mm-hmm. So cost of living overall is you've got good job growth in, these, in that area. It's been positive. They're mm-hmm. really, really trying to redevelop and hold on to a lot of the businesses that are there. Right. I can imagine what it's going to be when that Walter Reed area ups you know, the ante, they've got mm-hmm. some um, medical things going in there. I know Howard University owns part of it. Yep. They're putting in a new medical facility there. Mm-hmm. They've got mm-hmm. uh, some different embassies that are looking for foreign embassies that are looking for property there. Yeah. Yeah. Because um, where the embassies are, it's kind of like it's built out. Right. But yeah. then there are other countries that want to have a presence in D.C., want to be close to the government apparatus and so that that's really dope to be able to have space in the city to create new new embassy structure yeah i mean that's that's pretty cool yeah um and then if you've just joined we're talking about two zero zero one two in upper northwest washington dc we call it uga (laughs) upper georgia avenue um let's see the housing is going to be higher than the median cost in the united states Mm. but and it looks like it's a little bit higher than all of dc um, I like to show this slide because well, you when know, you're moving, you need to know these things. Absolutely. You know, the, another thing I wanted to uh, call out about that medium home cost, baby, is like I've seen some other um, data that says that average house in D.C. overall is like a million dollars right now. Oh, my God. Right. And so this is really tying into that concept yeah. of opportunity for people who are looking to buy, looking to invest, looking to be in a community, looking to have some upward um, um, momentum in their equity positions. So when you think about the average cost of a house in D.C. proper being a million dollars, right. and you look at the median home cost in this area being 689 then you can begin to see what that potential looks like in terms of your Yeah, upside. and I remember when we lived in this neighborhood, I really liked it. Mm-hmm. It was um, probably our first house mm-hmm. that we lived in, just the two of us in D.C. We always lived in apartment kind of situations, mm-hmm. but this was the first house that we lived in. Yep. And it was really, really nice. It was a three-story house. It had a full basement. Mm-hmm. It had, like, sunrooms on the back. It had private parking, but... <laughs> And this was in 1990. Yeah, the early early 90s. It was it was a little hot. It was New Jack City. It was new. (laughs) It was New Jack City out there. That's what it was. And um, Nino Nino was flowing. Nino was flowing through the hood at that time. (laughs) So the houses are really nice. They have huge front porches. Mm -hmm. The bedrooms. It's usually two or three bedrooms. Have really nice setup. The kitchen areas were that galley kind of thing. Yep. But a lot of people have really really renovated those homes in a oh, really nice yes. they're very very nice mm-hmm. now but yeah when we lived there we liked it we just had to close all the windows and stay in the house bah, 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 bah. <laughs> no we'd be like laying in the bed y'all and we would look out the back alley and people would be running through the back alley shooting at each other <laughs> one of the ladies that we you know how you drive on the street and, mm. and every day you see the same old lady sitting out on the porch she got shot and killed one day just sitting out there on her porch it so was, it, it was, was a wild it time was, it was that Heath would pull up in front of the house and me and we only had one daughter at this time and he, she we i would grab the baby we'd jump out and run in the house and Heath would go park because it was street parking because uh-huh. it was too dangerous for him to park behind the house. Mm-hmm. So it was street parking. He would park and then he would run back to the house and I would be standing at the door to let him in and close the door real quick. <laughs> it was crazy. It was great. I can't believe we lived like it that. Was, it was a different time. It was a different oh, time. Oh, God. And I'd be worried the whole time he was parking the car. So it was it was crazy. And look, it was we're so here. crazy. And now we're here. Here, here, here we are. 
are. Here we are. And so back so to now. back to Upper Northwest. So Upper Georgia let's Avenue. see. Rank. I got a cost UGA. of living. How about employment? How we're doing there? So the average mm-hmm. income is a little bit lower mm-hmm. than it is for the rest of D.C., but it is still higher mm-hmm. than the United States. And that goes back to what I was telling you guys about moving here and not being afraid to move here. Mm-hmm. It's doable. As you can see, the household income is a little bit lower than what we've been seeing in the other areas. Right. But like I said, the area is transitioning, gentrifying. Some people want to use, but it's a different kind of thing. Mm. Um, and I do see a lot of future growth in that area, don't you, babe? Oh, yeah. And they're calling it urban suburban mix. Urban suburban. Okay. I can feel it. So I can see that. I can definitely see that. It's like they don't have single family homes. There's some they single have families some, over there. Yeah. Some as you go family. higher up, as you mm. go more and more into. Yeah. You know, and um, as you can see, the median rent is lower. Uh huh. You know, it is lower. Hey, so take advantage, take, advantage. take advantage of that right now. Mm-hmm. And as you can see, the median home value is lower. So hey. I think that's something else you want to you want to look at. We're putting y'all on DC game this morning. Yeah, we are back in the back in the district. <laughs> so as you can see, there's a three bedroom, two bath, mm-hmm. single family home on a yard. Okay, it's with Sligo. A yard. Okay, Sligo Avenue for six fifty. Mm-hmm. That means it needs a little bit of work because uh-huh. if you can see the other ones you got 990 and 874 those probably have been read and one thing i want to call out about this slide tray is that uh you can see three of these four houses are actually on just on the maryland side from the dc line so i just wanted to show you that oh see tewksbury is uh in dc proper yeah these other uh-huh. ones are just it's over the same the maryland side. it's the same little but area this area is really close to, to the maryland it's close line. to the maryland yeah. line yeah okay and then here's some more now these are uh, let me show you what do y'all see on here pending pending <laughs> pending contingent snapping them up and we're gonna get to that later on yeah. in yeah, the we're show coming to a little too. piece about that yeah we've it's crazy around <laughs> here right now. So, and then for renting, let's see, what do we have here? Yeah, so it's still, you know, reasonable. I mm-hmm. guess people that are, have, and, and, the, and the numbers you see are for roommate situations, mm-hmm, guys. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's what I see here. The one condo for rent is close to $5,000 a month. Bring the it's bag. A nice, it's a nice size, but it's new mm-hmm. also. So it's going to be hard to find that. Mm-hmm. rental home yeah. for your family or something it's going to be more of a room situation but those are high prices for a one bedroom yeah. roommate situation but they're out there you gotta, just gotta look and i did want to show this map to people show that are moving to, to the baby. area so when you look at this you can see the darker the green the mm-hmm. higher the rent the mm. higher the average rent okay uh the lighter the green the lower the average rent you can see with the little legend at the mm. bottom and you can see two zero zero one two is falling into that lower mm-hmm. rent but it's right next to right right the higher rent averages that's a great call out baby yeah and the so deeper really green means that. the deeper pockets you need yes <laughs> most definitely oh, this is dope. that's a dope map right there yeah that's pretty cool okay okay and let's see demographics wise mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so you still have educated people uh in this area it's mostly african-american mm-hmm. and the male to female is about the same not too many children no mm-hmm. political leanings are going to be 100 strong liberal limited. strong liberal in that very part of very DC. very very liberal in yeah, this area that's it's throughout, like throughout dc it's it's like rabid liberal mm-hmm. In this part of, yep. D- I think more so in this part of DC, don't you think? DC in general is very liberal. Yeah, but if you go to some areas closer to Georgetown, look at that gonna, bottom. Look at liberal. that bottom right there. That that bottom dot it's is off like, the chart. It's y'all. off the blue. It's off the chart. <laughs> that's about that's that's very interesting. <laughs> so the median household income, we kind of went through this. Not too uh-huh. many families with children. Uh-huh. Um, uh-huh. This is a good uh, just. So you the mix the the mix of income yeah, in terms yeah. of the the community. So you have kind of all ranges of it's, people that it's live a there. Working, it was a working class right. um, neighborhood, yeah, and no then doubt. I like this one too for that reason. It kind of mm-hmm. shows you a little bit of everybody lives there, right? That's um, dope. That's which dope. I think that's good. Let's talk about crime. So crime is going to be higher mm-hmm. in the district yeah, as the you're city. closer to the district. Mm-hmm. So when you see this, um, just keep that in mind. Yeah. And it's it's changing. It's still not dark red. Yeah. So I think that is a very good sign. And it's the, more and, pink. And with all of the community involvement in that area, it's only going to get better. 
And just to give you an idea that that light, that light, light, like purple that says two, two, one, zero, one, that's Potomac. Mm -hmm. So that just gives you an idea of, you know, the difference. Where the housewives are. Yeah, that's where they live. Shout out to housewives of Potomac. Yeah, yeah, those are my <laughs> girls. Okay, and then we have um, just property, violent. You, you, your violent crime is going to be higher mm -hmm. in the district. Mm -hmm. But yep. it's still, once again, more property right. crime than anything. Yeah. And then we're going to start talking about schools now. Mm -hmm. So they do have some top schools. Look at that. I mean, this is A+. Plus. A, A, and these are public schools. Right, right, right. So if you can figure, and they have a middle school, they have a, a Benjamin Banneker, of course, is, is always been yeah. uh, an exceptional school. Across All, the street from Howard. Yeah, it's right across the street from Howard. Mm -hmm. it's, it's an exceptional school. Mm -hmm. uh, Woodrow Wilson High School has always been good. Alice Dillon Middle School. So I think these are good choices uh, for moving yeah. into the area. You want that suburban, urban lifestyle. You got kids. Say, we got the schools. Boom. So that's it for hit one of them, upper. Hit one of them buttons, right? Hit one of them buttons, baby, so they can so we can remind them to like, to like our video and our channel. That helps us with the algorithm. Hit that like button. I'm gonna hit that like button again, baby. Boom. Boom. Did it go? <laughs> they didn't like it that time. It's all right. Okay. We, we still show some love. We, we still heart y'all. We still heart y'all. We still heart y'all. <laughs> Yeah, that helps us with the algorithm. Mm -hmm. So let me What'd see. You, I can do this one too, baby. Hey. <gasps> there we go. Hit hey. that like button. Hit that like button. That helps us with the algorithm and it lets other people know that you're enjoying what you are seeing. If you like this video and you're getting value from the content being shared, please press the like button. Thank you. <laughs> That's pretty good, baby. I appreciate you. Oh, my gosh. So let's see. Let's go to the questions. Like I said, if you have any questions for us, just drop them right down in the comments and we'll get to them. What about some music into our transition? You want a music? See, he's trying to give me something me, else hit, to hit, do. Yeah. Hey. Uh, we're going into our next segment of the show. No, we're gentlemen. not. We're going into questions. Well, we're going to, that's a segment. Okay. The question segment is upon us. Hey. So if you have a question. Drop it down into the comment section where Heath and Tracy will read it, devour it, process it, I wanna say good morning to and everybody. give you a response. <laughs> so right now, it is time to answer questions. I think you missed your calling, babe. <laughs> <laughs> So, Ola Wendy Pez, how is your day? What's going day? on? What's we up? What's up? We are doing hey. great. Hey, Ola Wendy. Thank you for joining us this morning. Welcome, welcome. S. Smith, good morning. What up, Smith? Welcome to the show. Thanks for welcome joining back. us live. Smith is a regular on the show. Yeah, no doubt, yeah. No doubt. Yes, back. it is beautiful here. Yes. Oh, it's, it is dry out west right mm -hmm, now, mm -hmm. isn't it? It's so lovely here. The trees are popping, mm -hmm. and, and it's just really, really coming together here. It's we, really, really coming together. We send together. moisture and beautiful precipitation. I don't know, baby. It's the, it's the west. We send beautiful moisture and precipitation well, to the west right now. Okay. In the name <laughs> for Smith to have... A beautiful spring and some moisture to relieve the dryness okay. in the West. <laughs> Good vibes. Care 007, What's welcome up, Care? back. Care welcome in the building. Back. Good morning. Good morning. And thank you. Thank you so much. We're so glad you appreciate all this information. Shout out to the regulars. Appreciate you, Care. Let's see. And started from the bottom. You know it. You started know from the bottom. It. Now we're here. No. Humble beginnings were us. Our started first house. <laughs> we we have lived in the hood. Yep. And we, we don't have any problem with it. Yeah. It's where you have to start. You start and where you need to start. You start where you need to start. Mm -hmm. And you don't and, and it's good to start. These kids these mm -hmm. days, and let me just stop saying that. <laughs> but they think they got to have all they got to have the tile and the shower and <laughs> you know, no, y'all. My first kitchen man, we almost had a divorce. Hey. I looked at that kitchen, I said, he said, You'll never cook. You'll never cook. <laughs> and I cooked. And I was like, Do you see that kitchen? 
<laughs> it was awful, y'all. It was awful. Hey. But we're still here. It's doable. Practice it's gratitude. It's doable. Practice, Practice gratitude. gratitude. Thank you so much. No doubt. No doubt. Okay. Multidimensional man. Okay. I see you, multidimensional man. Welcome I thought you were to talk- the show. I thought you were talking about me. When I first saw it, I was like, "Okay, yeah, multi." I appreciate the compliment, no, but that's his name. No, I, I see love you that right name. here. I love, I love that name. Cause we bringing lots of talents to the table. He asks, "Did you experience racism in the DMV?" <sighs> so here's the thing. No. So here's the thing. So Tracy and I have back two- then in the ninety early nineties. Yes, but there was Tyson's. So it here's wasn't. so here's the thing. Okay. Trace and I have two um, two distinct experiences in the DMV. Right. One was when we were younger people, matriculating through Howard University. Right. When we first met. About thirty years. When ago. When we first married. Yeah. Right. So this was the '80s into the early '90s. Right. And then we have our experience uh, over the last 10, 10 years? 15 years. Yeah. Since our daughter started uh, college at Howard, yeah. us coming back and forth from Atlanta, from right. North Carolina into D.C. to attend to our daughters. Right. Um, and me having, you know, a work experience here over the last few years just was connected to my job. So our experience then was very different, right? So D.C. was known as Chocolate City, right? The city was yep. run by black people. There yep. was predominantly black people in the city everywhere you went and so except for little pockets. you were very comfortable in terms of your blackness and existing in the city in those days right right so really the discomfort was because you know the the drug trap the drug trade was like a large it thing was crazy in those days yeah. right and so outside of that um we didn't really have those kinds of like race issues but on the periphery at that time, right, when we, you were looking uh, at different jobs and you were doing, like, temp stuff and all this kind of thing. It was horrible. You did have some some, mm-hmm. some experiences that were that were racially charged. I would walk into a place. They would talk to me on the phone uh-huh. and have a great conversation. And great I, conversation. I would walk in, sit down, wait to meet whomever it is I was supposed to meet. and You get the big, the big bug out. You're Tracy? <laughs> And oh, immediately wow. um, be thank you for coming. Hey, but we really no appreciate the effort. Thank you for coming, Tracy. Without an interview. <laughs> so there. So it was some of that. It was some of that. Yeah. Yeah. But today's world in Metro Not DC. At all. I mean, it's Not so it's it's so diverse. And uh, you know, you can see with some of the uh, data that we've been illustrating is that is uh very le- left leaning in Metro DC, DMV, Northern Virginia, Maryland, right? And so from that perspective, I think there's a lot of open-mindedness in the area and, and the spaces that we operate in. So from that perspective, I think, um, you know, those those scenarios will be very few and far between in, yeah, this, in this area. We were, we were a little concerned coming from North Carolina mm-hmm. and because we were moving into a very similar, well, a, a predominantly lighter persuasion neighborhood. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you think, okay, you're moving into this neighborhood mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. these people don't know you. A lot of these people have lived here for a long time. Right. So we were a little, you know, Ooh, what's it going to be like? You mm-hmm, know, mm-hmm. It literally y'all the first day that we drove down to do like our, you know, open house, make sure the house is okay. You yep. know, we turn the corner and this is during the summer when at the height of all the riots and er- the riots and everything, we mm-hmm. turn the corner onto our little private drive and there was a sign in front of our house that said black lives, black matter. lives matter. We were like, what? We were like Oh what? my God. Wow. And it's our, our neighbor put it there in Northern Virginia. And we were like, Oh my God, this is, this is going to be different. <laughs> and we, our neighbors are the, yeah, we the, were great neighbors. The nicest people. Mm-hmm. My mother is um, older, and she's in her mid seventies. She walks and everything, and she's people just come out to her, say, mm-hmm. "Hey, how you doing? Yep. How's it going? Mm-hmm. Great day." They invite us places. Yep. They've brought us bread and yeah, we got lots of bread. And it's just, it's just <laughs> amazing. It's just really, really amazing. It's a great, great place to live. Yep. No, so the answer to your question is no. Yeah. We have not experienced racism in the DMV. Mm-hmm. Let's see. As Smith says, up, I am Smith? curious about the Kingstown area. Kingstown? Okay, that seems like some place we're going to have to look at. Okay. Is that uh, where is th- I've heard of that? Is that in Virginia? Kingstown. I don't know that name. Let me look it up real quick. Maybe um, 
that's not connected to King Street or Alexandria, Old Town, maybe. I I don't know. It does Kingstown. is that that didn't re- that didn't um resonate with us. Bell. Kingstown, Franconia. Oh, Franconia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's ninety five South. Yeah, ninety five South. Springfield, Franconia. Springfield. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So that's still um, we'll have to do that that's, one. Yeah, that's yeah, Northern we'll Virginia. definitely have to do that one. It's Northern Virginia. Yeah, we'll check it out. And no Samuel, doubt. good morning, Samuel. What's going on? Getting a new job in the DMV yeah, area. Yeah, Wanted yeah. to ask how travel would be mm-hmm. um, from the pet work okay. area to Reston. Okay. Whoa. Okay. okay. So. It's Metro for you. Yeah. I would definitely <laughs> check out Metro lines. Yeah. Yeah. Because what's gonna because pet work is in the middle. It's mm. literally here, let me pull up that map. Yeah, again pull the map up. You. Pull the map back up, baby. Um which map should I pull up? The one that showed uh George Avenue. Okay. Mm. So pet work right in the middle. Pet work is pet work right in the middle. Literally right in the middle. Mm-hmm. Of DC, so you see this little line, that little dotted line. I don't know if you can see that dotted line, but that dotted line is DC proper. So Petworth is literally right in the middle of Washington DC. So you mm-hmm. would have to go, okay, if you drove a car, you would have to go up to that line that's crossing across Rock Creek Park mm-hmm. to get to a major highway. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I would not. So it's basically like Beltway to 66 or, you know, yeah. there, there are a few different routes that you can go because you're in the city. You have yeah. multiple, multiple options. You have options. to cross a bridge. That's yeah. the first thing. You yeah, you got to cross a bridge. You, you got to get out bridge. of D.C. into Virginia. So yeah. you'll have to go across a bridge at some point. Right. Uh, and so that gives you, uh, but because you're in the city, you have multiple points of entry to get there, number one. Right. Number two, you can um, you can take Metro. Right, and so you I can would. get from I metro. Would. You can get from metro to uh, to Rest close in. to that area, right? You can get to Ty- Tyson's, d- d- depending on where in Reston you're going. I don't have a metro. Yeah, map so we don't have the metro map yet. But yeah, but check yeah. out the metro map. Yeah, and find out the closest metro stop, mm-hmm. and then you can actually put in like from where to where and what time to what time, and it'll tell you how long your travel and how much your travel is going to be. Yep. If yep. your company or whoever you're working with uh, subsidizes your transportation, a lot of companies here do. Yeah, take advantage of that. Take advantage of that, yeah, most absolutely. definitely. Mm-hmm. Most definitely. Okay, good but, question, But, you know, great neighborhood to live in and great place to work. We did Reston last week, as a matter of fact, mm-hmm. if you want to think about moving to Reston. Yeah, check out. Yeah, but he's somebody he's going to live in Petworth. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's good stuff, Sam. All the best with that. Good luck to that, buddy. Oh, S. Smith is, m- I'm Mrs. Okay. Okay, okay Mrs. Right. Smith. Yes, and you're right. It was in Virginia. No doubt. Okay, we're going to get Respect. to more questions, but let's jump into some of the stuff that happened this week. Oh, D.C. Okay, so we yeah. were talking about, we're going to do more questions too, but mm. let's talk about some of the cool stuff. So, Crazy stories from Washington, D.C.'s pandemic area real estate boom. We knew we had to come in guns blazing. Y'all, when I read this article. The panorama. I was like, what is going on? The, the buildings are hot commodities. So in the, the, local, the, the local market has been crazy. crazy. Today's house hunters are waiving contingencies, escalating six figures over asking <laughs> Six figures over asking y'all and making unseen, sight unseen purchases. Yeah. No, 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 no. People are like, no, yo, no, no, if whatever's wrong with it, don't worry about it. We're not going to put contingency on it. So this article. We just want to make sure that the house is not falling down and we buying it. This article looked at eight different people. <laughs> the first one we read, they said, these people right here on the screen, they said, we gave them one month free. So, obviously, the people didn't want to move out the house. Uh-huh. We know what happens. They don't ever do that. No, we well, used to well, be real estate agents. No, 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 no. No, no, no. They probably just needed more time because they lived there for a long time. No. So, they needed more time to put get all their stuff together and pack and do that. No. <laughs> we used to be real. Don't do that, y'all. Uh, we, I've done lease back deals before. Okay, good for you. I wouldn't do that. <laughs> Okay. We gave them one month free. Mm-hmm. We waived any requests to make repairs on the house. Mm. I think there may have been four other offers. Mm-hmm. The only contingency we had was the home inspection contingency. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They paid five thirty eight. 
Yep. Okay. And the house was originally listed at five seventy. So they got a deal. Yeah. So they got That's a deal. That's because they let them stay there a month they were free. Like, Look, y'all can stay. Y'all, we n- no contingencies. Y'all can stay there for a month. We gonna close on the house Mm-mm. and then give you, you a just month live in free. The house you, free. Just, you can just live there. No, 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 no. And then we'll move in. Okay. The entire <laughs> then the next one was the entire time the market was super tight. Uh-huh. I mean, it was crazy. If we went in on Saturday, there would be people sitting outside. People going through the house. People standing in the front yard. <laughs> this was every house that we looked at, especially on the weekends. In person, we looked at 50 or more mm, mm. in person. Right, right, right. We made five offers total. No house ever sold for list. Mm. We had 35 offers and ended up selling for close to 100000 over asking so you roll up to the house people like in the yard they're looking at their phones waiting, a, waiting they turn to get in yeah i think they're gonna open it up in like 30 minutes yeah so we, yeah. we're this a line you stand behind us you you in a, you in line this is in the dc area <laughs> this is in the dc area hot the, the next one we read was i actually had never been inside mm-hmm. when i put in the offer yeah so they just seen the virtual tour i had only done the virtual tour <laughs> my max budget was four hundred and sixty thousand dollars okay mm-hmm, mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. that's our max mm-hmm. i really felt like i had to put a little bit more mm-hmm. risky and pursue the top end of my budget right. the property was listed for 430 Mm-hmm. I escalated up to four sixty. It ended up getting it for four fifty five. Win, yay, no, win! No, this is what's happening out here. Don't do it, y'all. This is what's happening. Don't do it. The <laughs> next one is we realized we had come in guns blazing. We had to come in guns blazing. One of the things we realized is that contingencies pretty much had be had to be waived. Contingency was the key point. In order for us to be competitive in this market, we wrote a letter to the sellers explaining who we were and mm-hmm. why we were so interested in the home. That's a boss move. That is. That's mm-hmm. real, But you have to do it. Mm-hmm. You have to do it because yep. now they're picking who they want to live in their house. Right, right. We weren't the top bid, but mm-hmm. because we had waived inspection mm-hmm. and were approved for well above asking, we were able to get the house. Yes, yes. 699 was the asking. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. <laughs> we bid seven twenty five. Mm, mm, mm. <sighs> so, so you know that scenario really paints a picture for people who are looking to purchase, right? And it's like you have to come with your complete package and an entire presentation to differentiate yourself when the owner is looking at multiple offers and determining who they really want to negotiate with. So I just think that's a pro tip, right, in terms of uh, if you're in a competitive market and you're looking to buy, hey, paint the picture. This is my family. This is why we're looking for this property. You're listening to Heath, the real estate agent right now. (laughs) Heath is not a real estate agent. He used to be a real estate agent. I got skills. I used to be a real estate agent. Let me tell you something. Tracy got skills, too. Let me tell you all something. Do not buy a house right now. Tracy was one of the top 100 agents in all of the state of Georgia. And I... I'm your friend. You're <laughs> listening to me on your t- on your phone, on your TV, wherever. Uh huh. And I I want you to know something. What do, what do you want to know? What do you want them to know, Tracy? This is not the time to buy a house. Oh come on! People make their own decisions. They, hey, make, I didn't say don't make a decision. Okay. I'm telling y'all, <laughs> don't buy a house right now. Oh man! It is really really competitive out there. It is. And you mean to tell me? Mm-hmm. You're going to pay $100,000 mm. over asking. The real estate market ebbs and flows. Yeah. Yes, DC has a housing shortage. It does, yes. But it will come down. Mm. What goes up must come down. Okay, I see you out here, Tracy, trying to get a piece of wisdom. It might not come down for long, but right. it's going to come down. Yeah, so just be ready. Be ready, but don't don't stretch yourself like that. Stay ready, so you don't have to get and, ready. And go go. We always talk about going with that feeling mm-hmm. and and with ease. Mm-hmm. Our Creator makes things flow to us mm-hmm. with ease. Yes, without stress. Mm-hmm. If you are in a stressful bidding war mm-hmm. situation, can't find a house. That's not where you're supposed to be right now. Okay, baby. Drop okay. It on them. Okay. What else happened? Oh, Governor Ralph. What did Governor Ralph of Okay, we're talking about Virginia right now. Governor Ralph, that's uh Ralph Northam of Virginia. I think they pronounce it Northam. They said Northam. 
Northern. I said a Southern style. Okay, Northern. Governor Ralph Northern. Yeah, we are Southern. <laughs> Virginia is Southern. Yeah, so the whole legalization of cannabis that was slated for 2024. Ralph said, you know, let's go ahead and look at that now. Let's go ahead and run. Let's, let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and run it through now. Yeah, yeah. Step that timetable up. It wasn't supposed to happen until 2024, right? If you got an ounce or less, a hey, without intent to distribute, Ralph said, you good. So... Uh, let me Matter of fact, on top of that, anybody that's been locked up dealing with the cannabis situations in the past, we're going we need to clear all that stuff up too. So, just to give you an idea of how <laughs> liberal this area is, Virginia is a southern state. Do not get it twisted. Southern. And if you drive ninety five north, you will 95 know ninety five south. I'm sorry. If you drive, no, if you drive north through the south, right? Depending on where you coming from, baby. You coming from the south? You coming from where? Georgia. You come from Georgia, you diving on 95 South. I mean, 95 North. Thank okay. you. Okay. You drive 95 North, you will know uh-huh. that when you hit Virginia State Line, you are still in the South. Okay. Tr- Don't truth. Drop, put your cruise control on <laughs> about five miles over the speed limit uh-huh. and stay there. Yeah, keep it right there. S- keep it right there. Because mm-hmm. if you don't, mm-hmm. the county mounties are going to get you. No, that's the state troopers. Oh, yeah, the state troopers be on state 95. State troopers out there. Mm-hmm. Okay, they do not play. So mm-hmm. yeah, we would we would speed through North Carolina, and then as soon as we get to Virginia line, we'd be like, oh, cool control. North Carolina Ooh. trying to step their game up too. They were, they were but they they're not on Virginia. Level. They not on Virginia's level. So Virginia is the South, y'all. Virginia is the first state to not only abolish the death penalty, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but also abolish uh, also legalize marijuana. I see you out here, Governor Northern. Go ahead, Governor Governor Northern. <laughs> so Virginia's becoming an up and coming. You know, su- Southern Virginia wants to secede from Northern Virginia. <laughs> It's really, I mean, they really do. They really do. They really, they hate us. It's a little different uh, vibe. It's because there's more people that live in Northern Virginia. So we run, we basically run the state because Mm -hmm. there's more people up here. So everything that's voted on, Mm -hmm. it comes through Northern Virginia. But people in Southern Virginia see see us as an extension of D.C. So they like, that's that's D.C. That don't represent us. That's not us. Get that out of here. It's like, no, but like uh, 20 of y'all. Get that out of here. (laughs) So if you like anything you're hearing, press hit that, that like button. Press the like button. Hit that like button. Let me see the thumbs. We love you guys. We love you guys. See the thumbs Let's go there. back to the questions. Okay. Okay. Pull it up. Pull okay. it up. Lexi Lamb. What's up, Lexi? How you doing? Welcome, Lexi. Happy Saturday. Go ahead and read it, babe. It says, hi, I came across your channel a year or two ago. Uh, memory. I think if you don't want to live in directly in the D- in DC. Okay. What are the closest outskirts surrounding DC? So the closest outskirts, there's mm-hmm. so many. You have DC in the middle of Maryland mm-hmm. and Virginia. Yeah, I think a lot of it depends on what it is that you're doing, Lexi, right? What it is that you're doing, where yeah. do you need to go, where do you need to be, right? And so that's what we talk about on this channel, right? The idea is if you're going to move, if you're going to move somewhere, yep. then design your life in a way where it's optimal, right? And so you're optimizing what it is that you're doing, and the whole the whole motion of moving here is where do you need to be, where are you going, what's driving your decision, where are you working, uh, what it is what is it that you're doing every day, what are the things that you do for recreation, right? And you put all of that together. There's so many nice places yep. here. Yep. We chose Arlington, Virginia, which is not D.C. proper. Mm-hmm. And we chose Arlington, Virginia, because we wanted to be close to D.C. Mm-hmm. And, but we also wanted to be close to Heath's new job, mm-hmm. which is going to be at the uh, Amazon News uh, Amazon's new headquarters. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And uh, so we basically started there and then we drove a circle around it. And we were like, well, how long does it take to get from here to here? And what are the traffic patterns and what time? And we did all of that. Yeah. So that's what was important to us. We do not have school age children. Yeah. So that wasn't an issue for us. Mm-hmm. The schools that are here in Arlington are excellent, mm-hmm. even if they were still in school. Yeah. But the point of it is is that you have to figure out what is important to you. Yep. You have areas like Loudoun County, which is at least 45 minutes to an hour away from D.C. Beautiful, beautiful place to live. Very suburban feeling. You have Reston, Virginia, which we talked about last mm-hmm. week. On the Virginia I mean, on the Maryland side, you have Columbia, Maryland, which mm-hmm. is a planned community north of the city. Mm-hmm. Out to the uh, east side of the city, you have Bowie, Maryland. Mm-hmm. So it just depends on where you want to live. Mm-hmm. And 
there's so many cool lifestyles here. Chevy Chevy Chase and Bethesda are really in tight around the city. Mm -hmm. They're going to give you that city vibe. Yeah. So lots of options. So many options. And you still have access to the city. Yeah. Still have access. Okay. Oh, yeah. Amen. 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 Capital 7 in the building. Hey, Mrs. Smith. Oh, uh, good advice. How long do your real estate, uh, do you think real estate will be like this? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So there is a housing shortage in D.C. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, There are pockets of the city, Deanwood, Upper Georgia Avenue, Northwest, that I think are going to be a little hot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The lower price communities are hot. Yep. Um, the higher price communities are not as hot. Mm-hmm. They're not going to be. It just it's this it's this window of where the housing prices are like that five to seven hundred thousand dollar range. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's crazy. I read an article. A house was on the market for something crazy like three hundred forty five thousand dollars. They got eighty eight offers <laughs> eighty eight <laughs> in like two hours. And you know, then the uh, uh, from a national perspective, I, I think there's a lot of rumblings about uh, how some things are going to shake out, and you're going to have, you know, after the panorama yeah. begins to thin out, and they some people uh, can't pay their mortgage, unfortunately. Yeah, so you'll see yeah. some 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 opportunities, I think, for for buyers toward the end of the uh, calendar year. I think. Yeah, I think with the combination of the rental situation mm-hmm. that you can't evict people, you cannot evict people right now. Mm-hmm. So people are unable to pay their rent or if they are paying it again, they still are behind. Mm-hmm. And eventually all of that is going to show up in yep. the economy. Mm-hmm. We don't know when that's going to show up. I think you have to measure it for you. Mm-hmm. What's the economy of you? Yeah. Yep. It's not about what is going on in the world. Mm-hmm. It's not about what's going on even in D.C. as, as far as economy. What you want to look at is what's going on with your economy. Yep. What is going to help you? What is the best decision for you and your family? Great advice, baby. And that's how you, you stay away from making those big mistakes. We, we've had to learn that the hard way. Mm-hmm. But that's how we've basically run our life and our lifestyle and our family's lifestyle for probably the past 20 years. Mm -hmm. Because the last recession, we got caught up like so many people in doing what everybody was doing. And and it was crazy. And we were real estate agents. And so we looked at ourselves and said, we don't want to ever go through that again. So how do you do that? You look at your economy. You don't get caught up in what people think about what you're doing with your money. Um, You don't worry about what other people think you're doing with your money. What do you need to do with your money in your situation to make your life stable and to have growth in that? So keep that in mind. Don't get caught up in when things are going to start and when things are going to end and what the the MSB, NBC people are saying. <laughs> it's all fodder. What's going on with your economy? If you want to buy a house right now, if you can afford to do all of that, do it. If that's what you want to do. And if you're like, well, that sounds crazy. I don't want to do that. Rent. Rent for a little while. Sit on the sideline. That's what we're doing. And all that agree said. Yeah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> So, Naughty Girl 12, yes to that. I'm trying to do everything with ease. Yes, it's just something about... She gets it. It's just something about being at ease, Mm -hmm. being at peace. Because that stress will kill you. The stress will kill you. Mm -hmm. The stress will kill you. It'll give you high blood pressure. It'll Mm -hmm. give you high cholesterol. It'll make you fat. Mm -hmm. It'll do all this stuff to you. It'll give you cancer. Mm -hmm. So, you have to really just step back and go, is this easy? Is this is this happening? Is this happening easily? Mm-hmm. Easily, and if it's not, just a no. It's just that simple. Do you want ease or do you want dis ease? There you go. Very good, baby. Nobody wants disease. Care Double O Seven says, "When do you think this crazy real estate boom might slow down or at least become less frenetic?" Yeah, I think less frenetic. Uh, the end of uh, twenty. 21 going into 22 uh, but yeah. slow down I don't think there will be a whole lot of uh, a whole lot less momentum in Metro DC just because of all the uh, positive factors but yeah you will you will you will have a slowdown nationally yeah there'll be a slowdown nationally as far as DC is concerned it'll slow down mm-hmm. eventually mm-hmm. Um, it can only you know do so much yeah. it can only do so much yes the incomes are high here mm-hmm. many many people are moving here yep. 
but um if you want to sit on the sideline don't don't let it stop you from coming to the area if you have enough money if you have enough to just don't spend all your money Mm -hmm. don't spend all your money on something don't stretch yourself Mm -hmm. to where you don't think it's gonna work later maybe maybe we need no you don't it's just there's another house trust and believe there is another house another apartment another um, condo. how much money do you need to uh naughty girl 12 says how up, much money do you need to live comfortably in dc yeah so i think one of the key questions is one of, one of the key things in dc is the is housing cost yeah. right so that's the biggest driver of your expense and so where traditionally Tracy and I would advise not spending more than twenty five percent of your of your income. She says, um, by comfort I mean um all three kids have their own room mm-hmm. in a diverse neighborhood, yeah. welcoming, inclusive environment, lots of things to do, twenty minute drive. Yeah, I get that. And so the point I was making was that uh in, in this area you may have to go more towards fifty percent from in, from an expenditure yeah. perspective. Yeah, right? for the for the um housing to cost. get the right to get the right yeah. scenario that you're looking for. So just bear that in mind, just in terms of um, uh, you know what you need to do for your family to be able to to do the things that you're accustomed to do, uh, and just know that you know because of that expenditure, you may have to spend a bit more than what you're accustomed to on housing. But the other things will be pretty much in line with uh, with where you are. So I would just say take some time. I think they're actually uh, that's actually part of the mindset piece that we're going to talk about today is just budgeting your life and understanding what your inflows are and what your outflows need to be. So to answer the question, mm-hmm. I would say <laughs> What's the answer, baby? What's the answer to Naughty Girl Toy's question? Two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Is that what you is that what you're saying? That's that's not what she's asking, baby. Yeah. So now, if, if 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 that's the answer, then what Naughty Girl twelve one twelve is going to say is, well, if I don't make turn fifty thousand dollars, then I can't move to DC. No, and, and she put true. specifications in. I understand that, but her specifications are three kids, so she's concerned about schools. Uh huh. Have their own room. Mm hmm. So that's four bedrooms. Okay. In a diverse neighborhood. Okay. I understand that that right there. Right, right, right. Welcoming and inclusive environment. Right. So you so wait. I'm not done. Wait, <laughs> and she wants a lot of things to do within a 20 minute drive. Okay, so what I'm saying is she can accomplish that if she does all of those things in Columbia, Maryland. In okay, so Reston, stop. How much does she need in, in Columbia, Maryland? She don't need 250. She can do it with 100. Or no, 100 plus. you cannot do it with 100. You, you would go, need go you would need 130, 140. Okay, 130, 140. That's not 250. She, I'm thinking about <laughs> twenty minute drive. Twenty minute drive. If she lives and works in the same place, she might have a twenty minute. Okay, drive. twenty minute drive to where, naughty girl. Maybe that'll help us. I told you how to do it. There you go. I wouldn't move to DC with less than a hundred thousand dollars. I, I think I can agree with that. So one hundred thousand dollars. Okay, cool. But four bedrooms. <laughs> Four bedrooms, y'all. Try to get. You might be sharing. Somebody might be so sharing. So I, I looked at the question is, if I get a job offer, mm-hmm. what do I need to ask for? Okay, I follow you. I feel you. I'm not, I'm not arguing with so you. So don't take less than one thirty, one forty. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I will say that. How about that? Hold on. And it's doable. One thirty, one forty is doable for profes- professional. Tech government one thirty one forty is doable and that's 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 good. I feel like we need some background music, baby. Maybe, maybe next week. Oh my god! So this maybe man don't week. help me with nothing technically. Maybe he next just, week. He's my dreamer, y'all. I'm just thinking that you know it's a little quiet. <sighs> okay, I'll work on it. <laughs> Gina Barnes, hey y'all. What's up, hey Gina. Gina. What's up? Happy Saturday. Hey girl. Hey. She said, got my grandchild, but I'll be tuning in. Ne- okay, yes, yes. Shout out to the beautiful love to the grandbaby. Miss Smith said, thank you so much. You are welcome. Let's go. Moving yes. in your peace, Mrs. Smith. Yes. 
Goodness. Entrepreneur, I make about 100, 120. Oh, you word, got this. Word. You got this. Word, yeah, you you probably need to look. I would look at Bowie. Mm -hmm. I would look at Upper Marlboro, mm -hmm. which is where we're looking. Mm -hmm. I mean, not where we're looking. We're going to talk about Upper Marlboro next week. Mm -hmm. um, I would look at uh, maybe Reston. Mm -hmm. I would look at Reston. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe Franconia Springfield, mm -hmm. which is a... Uh, like part of Alexandria, there are a lot of places you could live. Lots of places. Lots of places. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and make sure you're going deep with your team too, Naughty Girl, right? In terms of uh, maximizing your, your tax scenarios, mm -hmm. engaging with all of your different accounting practices to maximize what you're doing with your business and your expenditures. So yeah, uh, you, you, you got it, girl. Do your thing. Yeah, make sure you have a team around you to help you grow. Mm -hmm. That's the important thing. Yeah. All right, so Heath wanted a little music. Let me give Heath a little music. I'm just clicking on it. I don't know what this is, but uh -huh. we're gonna move. Into but it's the bringing next it's bringing segment. ease, though, isn't it? Yes. Yes. Yeah. See, I'm yeah. Too excited. <laughs> I like it. I like it. This one's called overthinking. Not overthink, y'all. Okay, break it down. So nice. um, the next thing we're going to talk about is designing your life. How to prepare financially for your move. This is so important. Yeah, because we so actually got a couple of questions connected to this today, right? Yeah, it's so important. So the first thing you want to do is research your cost of living, right? Yeah, you need to have an accurate idea no of the cost of living. Mm -hmm. Uh, your how your new city mm -hmm. compares to the current city that you're living in, right? right? Mm -hmm. Your housing, of course, tends to be the biggest monthly cost. Mm -hmm. So you should start there. Start with figuring out how much the new home will cost you, whether you're renting, whether you're buying, or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. Even if you don't know what you're going to do, make sure you think about that. Mm -hmm. The other thing is make sure you're considering any new costs yep. that you're going to incur after your move. For example, if you're moving to a new city and it's got bike trails and public transit, mm -hmm. Or are you moving to a city that has more of a car culture? Right, right, right. So here in D.C., it's more of a public transportation culture. There's tons of Ubers and Lyfts mm -hmm. and buses and bike trails and electric bikes you can rent. And it, the, the transportation here is above average, I would diverse, say. Yeah. It's very diverse. You can definitely live in the city with no car. Mm -hmm. But... If you're going to move to the outer areas, like a buoy, we were talking about Columbia, mm -hmm. Maryland, rest, and you're going to need a car. Mm -hmm. So if you live somewhere, you don't have a car, you move here, that's an extra cost. Mm -hmm. Okay. Make sure you investigate the local tax situation. Right. I noticed when we moved here, mm -hmm. tax on our car is 5% of the car's uh, Overall value, value. Overall yeah, value. every year. Mm -hmm. Done. I, I had, I mean, I think I paid more taxes to Virginia mm -hmm. within the first month Mm -hmm. of moving here yep. but we we had a little help with that with his um My company yeah. yeah but you have to consider things like that so i think for relocating for tax issues you got to get your driver's license you got to get your tags you have to th get things like that so you want to look at what is the cost mm -hmm. of those things before you really really make that move you yep. don't want to run into any unpleasant financial surprises at tax time and then understanding the uh the tax consequences as relates to your paycheck too right because yeah uh, that was know, another one for you us may have a little bit better scenario in virginia D.C. and then Maryland versus um, the other way around, right? Right. And so I think if you live in Maryland, your tax is going to be a little bit higher as related to your paycheck. Yeah. So so investigate all those kinds of things. The next one is make your budget. What's the budget? What's the budget, right? You're going to have, uh, you know, really you need two separate budgets, right? You're going to need a budget for your move, the, the move itself, right? The physical moving of uh, the things that you have. Yeah. And then you're going to need a budget for the expenses uh, in terms of what you'll have when you move into your new place. So, um, you know, make sure that you're clear on all of your costs, uh, getting you and your belongings to the destination, the cost of selling into the home, as Tracy was alluding to. Like, um, we had to stay in a hotel for, what, three days, I think? Yeah, yeah, and that was unexpected, yeah. too, right? Because our truck wasn't getting here. Yeah, so now if you're doing a shorter move, you're moving in-state somewhere in one state to another state, I mean, you could probably get that done for $1,000 or less, right? But if you're going, you know, over a 1,000 miles, you, you're going to traverse a couple of different states, you're going to get your U-Haul and pack all of that stuff. You got to figure and, out the gas. Hey, you still got the expenses, right? How much, how much gas is it going to cost? 
you know, uh, what kind of stuff you have to buy, just the boxes and the packing material and the bubble wrap. Mm-hmm. And uh, you don't want to break all your plates and glasses and what have you, right? And so you're going to go along the way. You're going to pay some tolls. You're going to have maybe to stay in a hotel overnight or two days. So all of these things you want to make sure that you are a lot for. Yeah, make sure you have your fees ready for moving into your apartment mm-hmm. or your house. Mm-hmm. Um, and you're not going to be able to, it's not going to be perfect. Mm-hmm. That's why you have to leave room. So you want to build an emergency fund. That's the next thing. Yeah, have your extra bag, right? And so, hey, if something unforeseen happens, you got some cash, you got some funds on hand. Typically, you'll hear kind of three to six months for those kinds of things, right? People say, hey. I think that's a lot. What, what but are your expenses? If you don't have a job, I think you need that much. But if yeah, three don't. months. Yeah, you want to have about, you want to at least have a month or two. Mm. You don't want to go in and not have any extra money, basically. Yeah. I think perfect world, you want to have six to 12 months if you can just like paint the picture and just say, hey, no matter what happens, and I got six months of expenses. To I find know, a job. Yeah, yeah. They give you time to find a job, to do whatever you need to do, and you you know, you still, you still live it. And when we say expenses, we mean food, clothes, and shelter, mm-hmm. not the cable bill and stuff like that. You, you can know? turn that off. You can turn that off. <laughs> um, you want to see what the banking is like. You mm-hmm. know, everybody has to have banking everywhere you go. And if you're like banking with a local bank mm-hmm. or a credit union, when you move here, you might not have access to that. Or if mm-hmm. you have access to it, and whenever you access it, you get uh, additional fees. So you want to make sure that the banking is in line when you move to your new town, right? Yeah, you mean like you have a network of ATMs, and so every time you need to put your hands, yeah, on some make money, sure they you at least the reimburse just, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just make sure you got all. Or the use your debit card. I mean, debit cards make it a lot better now, but make sure you got just it all just tight. make sure that's tight. Yeah. Um, get your credit score as high as you can. Credit Optimize game. that credit score, whether you're renting or buying. Mm-hmm. It does not matter. Either way, you're going to need to have that credit score as high as it can go. Yep. They're going to run your credit every time. Yep. When you, you open your house, utilities, you they gonna, they going to check and see if you paid your utilities where mm-hmm. you were before. And then try to get rid of... You know, you don't. And then during that time, don't open any new credit. Mm -hmm. If you know you're going to move, don't open any new credit. Cut your utilization of your credit down as much as you can because you're going to need that space when you move. There are things you're going to want to buy for your new place. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to um, put food in the house. That's usually your first big bill. You're going to have to get more cleaning supplies. There's things you're just going to have to do, things you're going to want to do. And definitely if you're buying a house, don't change anything, right? No. Don't add credit cards. Don't Don't buy a new car. Don't miss miss any payments. Change all your uh, your little ratios and stuff. Get rid of as much debt as you can, too. That's another thing. When you move to a new town, Mm -hmm. You don't want to carry your old bill or something like that with you Mm -hmm. because it just be, I don't have to pay that. Yeah, you do. Yeah. So before you move Mm -hmm. and, you know, you want to get it all paid down, you relax more. You'll enjoy Mm -hmm. your new town more and you're going to minimize that monthly outgo because you already took care of it. You're done. You've cut off everything from that old place. You're all done with that old place. Yeah. Start a a, uh, clean slate as much as you can. Yeah. When you move to a new city, there are two paths you can choose. Uh You can either do your financial prep work yep or you can just wing it <laughs> we don't recommend the latter uh having i don't think i've ever i don't think we've ever winged it have we yeah i think when we moved from college mm-hmm. back home we were winging we we're winging a lot of stuff we were winging a lot of stuff but when we <laughs> left georgia and moved to north carolina mm-hmm. we were ready and when we it moved was, from north carolina to dc we were ready yeah we did not play we were doing things so on purpose it, We've been very pur- purposeful about all the things that we we're talking about today. And it was enjoyable and it was easy. And it made a tremendous difference. And one thing I noticed that we do, we always move to the new place. Mm-hmm. Even if we're getting an increase in salary or something mm-hmm. like that, we try to pull back on the outgo. Even when we moved here, it was difficult to do. But we said, we're going to do everything on one salary. We're yes. going to figure out if we can do this on one salary. Increase. And and that's how you do it. So we figured out everything on one salary and then we got the additional salary. So now it's great. But if you move to a city and say, we need both salaries and we're going to do everything on both salaries. Do you, do you have to do that? Mm -hmm. So think about that. Think about how you move. And if it takes a little longer, be patient. We've Mm -hmm. talked about that too. Mm -hmm. Be patient. We speak increase of everyone listening and everyone watching in your life. Yes. Thank you, baby. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Do we have any more questions? I think we do have a couple more questions up there. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's a couple. There's a couple up there. Mrs. Smith. 
Well, can we talk about entrepreneurship? Mm. Expanding on your response. Yeah, so entrepreneurship is huge here. Mm -hmm. It there are a lot of um, DMV grants mm -hmm. for small businesses. Come on, it, grants. Um, I saw a lot of them on the UGA mm -hmm. uh, Main Street website. Yeah. Um, like I said, if you Google UGA mm -hmm. Upper Georgia Avenue Main Street, yeah. they had a lot of small business loans there. DC is very supportive mm -hmm. of small businesses, as is the surrounding area. Absolutely, because Amazon is moving to Northern Virginia. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of grants going on there. Mm -hmm. Amazon is very pro business. Mm -hmm. They a lot of people like to think that they don't support small businesses. It's the exact opposite, though. Mm -hmm. Just for example, they're building uh, their new towers. What do they call them? Well, the signature towers. Signature towers yeah. and they don't have cafeterias mm -hmm. with free food mm -hmm. at Amazon yeah and the reason why they don't have cafeterias with free food at Amazon is because they want their employees there are thousands of employees to go have lunch in the community mm -hmm. and support the community yeah no doubt. so that area in Crystal City slash National Landing is going to be amazing because the businesses that are come there are going to be really supported by that those two huge Amazon buildings and you know another thing uh, with respect to the Metro DC area right is that if you think about DC being a, a government hub um, so much of commerce and things that are happening in DC here. is connected to government right and so in terms of contracting and all of those kinds of things there are immense amount of opportunities in that space as well yeah and so when you do your research at Tracy's point about U UGA the um, the community is really working hard to support and, Small and they're engaging with the SBA mm -hmm. and all of these different uh, grant scenarios through the city and through the federal government. And so the, the entrepreneur community is really strong here. It's very strong here. It's very connected. Mm -hmm. Check check your Facebook. Um, yeah. Check Facebook. Check um, just Google. If you Google a lot, DC small business grant mm -hmm. opportunities, mm -hmm. they have so many. And I didn't put them into the uh, presentation because there were so many. Yes. So definitely check that out. So entrepreneurship, it, it, entrepreneurship here is big. Mm. It is big mm -hmm. multi-dimensional man asked do you guys have any advice for young newlyweds oh do we wow well actually multi-dimensional man tracy and i are relationship strategists specializing in premarital preparedness and intramarital improvement so please check out some of the playlists here on our channel for all of the relationship content that you can stand in addition to that joyfully married after on any of your Listening Platforms is available where Tracy and I dive into relationship issues in depth. So if you mean specifically for moving to the area, mm -hmm, is that mm -hmm. what you mean, multidimensional man? Yes. Um, if you mean moving to the area, newlyweds, I would say work off, try to work off one job. Mm -hmm. Because, and I say that, and it's hard, I know, but I say that, yes, okay, I say that because... As newlyweds living in such a big city that's expensive, you don't want to get stressed about money. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's really going to drive a wedge. If, you have all, if you're always concerned about money, it's going to drive a wedge. Now, if you have two jobs, try to work off one or one and a half of those incomes. Mm -hmm. If you're in that space, you all are going to be good. Yep. Try to move to areas where you see young families. We mm -hmm. talked about Navy Yard Southwest. Yeah, right? a lot of stuff in Navy Yard. And if you're looking to start your family, mm -hmm. try to find areas like, um, what's what? the one we talked about? What, where Jasmine used to live? Yeah, Dean Wood mm -hmm. with the, the single homes and everything. If you don't have kids yet, mm -hmm. that's the beauty. If you don't have kids mm -hmm. yet, you can live a lot of places in the city. Really, really try to find other newlywed c uh, couples. One thing we do suggest is be around people like yourself mm -hmm. when you're married and you're young, especially in a new town, yep. because that's going to reinforce your relationship. Mm -hmm. If you have other relationships around you like yours, it's, mm -hmm. it, that's what helped us yep. when we were young. And the key piece of advice we always give when you're married is that if you're okay, then everything else is going to yeah. be okay. So make you sure wanna, the two of you are okay. You want to make sure that you maintain uh, the and go deep with your relationship and make sure that both you guys are good, right? Make sure you're checking in on one another and keeping things simple and uh, do a lot of dreaming together, right? Yeah. Make your plan, 
make your dreams right when you when you look at your dreams and then you begin to put dates on things then your dreams become plans so make sure that you you guys are doing that together so and, and that'll that'll really drive everything else for you yeah and make it fun make it an adventure always have a new goal for the both of you because you got a partner yeah i love that such a good question yeah well this is a great show today guys thank you so much and if you enjoy the time again join us next saturday at 11 11 a.m eastern okay and we'll have more ask us anything with conversations with heath and tracy living in the dmv designing your life and remember wherever you gonna go don't just live there design your life there Oh, any recommendations for young professionals looking for new relationships? Oh, uh, here we go. The matchmaking game. Oh, child. <laughs> there are so many young people that live here. Mm-hmm. If you move here and you turn on your. It's a whole vibe. It's a whole. It's like, yes. The, the answer is the, yes. The bar. You can find the, your other half here. The after work scene. It's crazy. The networking. It's so much. It's the, nothing but young people here. The. HBCU mm-hmm. connectivity, the what's happening with the city, so much. things are going to be opening back up. Because there's so many colleges here, and people come here and they stay. So mm-hmm. it's amazing for young people looking yeah, for something Kamala Harris else. in the in the White House. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff popping. So, so if you're looking for a mate, this a good it's a good place as any. Wherever you're going, don't just live there. Design your life there. Thanks, guys. See you next weekend. Bye, y'all. <laughs>